Good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is where you are, data YouTubers. I am Al Bellamy, aka the Marine that smiles at spreadsheets, aka Major Data. So I am here today for a book report. Yep, you heard that right. I'm going to report on the latest book I've read, and I'll tell you why. So, it wasn't all that long ago that I used to fear public speaking. That may seem a bit weird now that I'm chucking videos up on every social media website I can find, but I used to live in mortal fear of both public speaking and book reports. Um, I, I hated them. I hated being told what to read. I wanted to read whatever I wanted. I hated having a deadline, especially for reading a book that I wasn't particularly interested in, usually for school. Um, and I especially hated reading a book and then having to stand up in front of my class and talk about it. And this fear was so intense that, no kidding, I threw away an assignment once rather than having to give an oral report. Um, think about that. I'd rather take a zero than have to stand up in front of my seventh grade English class and talk for what, like two minutes? Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is something that affected me pretty deeply early in my life. Now, since gotten over it, I was on the debate team, several different places, uh, 23 years in the Marine Corps, teaching umpteen different classes on every subject under the sun to a bunch of dopey Marines, uh, half of which were bored. So I had to go up there and do like a little song and dance to entertain them. Um, but I've, I've mostly gotten over the fear of public speaking, but I still, when I thought about doing this, when I finished the book and I said, I should do a book report, there was that fear back in the pit of my stomach. So I tell you all of that to tell you this, this video is more for me than it is for you. I'm realistic about this. There's book report right in the title of the video. That's basically the equivalent of giving the finger to the YouTube algorithm. I expect literally tens of people to watch this video and I'm okay with that. I have always looked for ways to increase my retention of nonfiction books. Fiction books, I remember them for days. That something about the story just triggers the part of my brain that recalls. But nonfiction, I don't do well with retention. And I'd be curious to hear if anyone else shares this problem. But I thought maybe after reading this book, if I do a book report, and if I stand up and do a video on it, and I've got to prepare some notes, which are scattered all over my wall right now, that maybe I'll retain it a little bit better. So like I said, more about me than it is about you. If you watch, if you enjoy, wonderful. And if you happen to read this book, hey, tell Carol I said hi. So without further introduction, since I've already burned three minutes of my video time here, we are here to report on Confident Data Skills by Carol Aramenko. This copy here that I have is the second edition. It was published in 2020. I probably bought it when it was fairly new. Um, it's probably been over a year since I bought this. I think this was early on in my, the beginnings of my data journey when I decided to retire from the Marine Corps. Um, and this looked really good. I love Kirill Aramenko. Super Data Science was one of the first podcasts I listened to. Um, I loved his speaking style, his interviewing style. Um, love John Crone too. John, if you ever watch this, you're awesome. Um, still love Super Data Science. Um, data Science Go was one of the first conferences I went to, virtually of course, but Carol has kind of been a hero of mine for a while in data science. Not sure what he's up to now, but hey, Carol, if you want to read another book, write another book, uh, this one's great. So now that I've buried the lead, um, yeah, bought it about a year ago. It's been sitting on my bedside table staring angrily at me amidst a pile of other books that I haven't read. Um, but lately I've, I've been in this challenge called 75 Hard. If you're interested in challenges and, and sort of mental toughness, physical conditioning, I urge you to look it up. It's, it's really a very interesting process. 75 Hard involves reading 10 pages a day. So I've already plowed through two books. I'm only a month into the, the initial 75 days of the challenge. Um, the first book was uh, Gilbert Eichlenboom's book, which I really enjoyed. Maybe I'll do a report on that as well. But this is the second one and really wanted to produce something based on it. So bottom line up front, who do I think should read this book? Well, anyone who wants an overview of data science and, and kind of the math and theory behind it. Now, this is a very digestible product. Um, it's not terribly long, which we'll get into. Um, it is a very quick read, believe it or not. Um, it does get into the basic algebra and a little bit of 
not really the calculus, but just the, the graphing and the theory of each of the data science theorems that are, that are included in here. Anybody who wants a an overview of the data sphere, anybody taking their first footsteps into data science, um, and, and if you're just interested in mathematical things and you, know, you find such books interesting, this is a very good one. So highly recommend it. It starts out with, uh, it's divided into three parts. Um, so part one is what is data? Um, and then and you kind of, I really like how it's organized with the parts. There's a question for each one. Um, and, and then he goes on to kind of answer the question. There's, there's just some hiccups there. We'll get into that. But what is data is part one. Chapter one, defining data. Um, and he really gets like super high wave tops in this first chapter, just talking about what is data? Where do we find it? How long have we been using data? Right off the bat, he gets into what I think are one of the huge strengths of this book, and that is he goes into concrete examples. Right in the first chapter, there's one part where he goes from, there's a concrete example about, you know, kind of historical uses of data, and he talks about RKO pictures in the 1950s and how often they used Katherine Hepburn because she tested very well. And they kept cranking out movie after movie with Katherine Hepburn and people just kept going to it and going to it. That was very early on, you know, long before the days of Excel, uh, a great use of data. He flips the next page and then he's talking another example about Amazon and their recommender algorithm. So in and, and my sense of Carol was always that this is a man with just staggering breadth of knowledge. And so that was very cool to get those uh, examples of every concept he put forth. It's like, here's how people actually use this and have used this throughout history. Really enjoyed that. Okay, chapter one, defining data. Chapter two is how data fills our needs. And then chapter three is AI in our future. What I found really interesting about these chapters was he really takes some good time to debunk some of the myths and fears about data, about you know, the robot takeover. He talks about um, artificial, artificial intelligence and the difference between um, uh, artificial general intelligence, which is what people basically fear, you know, it's Ultron where, the, you know, or Skynet where the machine becomes self-aware and starts killing humans. Um, and he talks about the differences there and he really debunks a lot of those fears. So useful part of the book for at Thanksgiving when, you know, Uncle Bernie gets all liquored up and, and starts spouting off about robots taking over the world. You can quote Carol and kind of get him to shut up or, or at least try and talk reason to him. Um, and sound pretty smart. This book will help with that. Um, so going on into part two, and this is where the book really starts to shine. When and where can I get data? So right here, you'll see there's kind of a wonky flow to my marker board here. A lot of it to do with the limitations of the camera and the space involved, we're working on it, okay? So part two, when and where can I get data? I'm talking about gathering and analysis, although it builds quite far off of that. So chapter four, identify the question, the question, you jerk. All right. So that was a joke that only the 40, 50, and 60-somethings in the audience will understand. Millennials, go ask your mom or dad. Look up John McEnroe, he was a great American. The question, you jerk. All right, chapter five, data preparation. And everyone's favorite, data cleaning. Shout out to Susan Walsh, uh, everyone's favorite data cleaning expert. Really gets into some good detail right there um, and talks about some good cleaning procedures, some things that you want to look for in your QA processes. All right, this is where it gets a little weird, okay? The flow of this book isn't great, and I'll talk about that in the summation. Okay, chapter six is titled Data Analysis Number One. And in Data Analysis Number One, he immediately launches into a discussion of the major data science theorems and algorithms, um, which is great. And the chapter is brilliant. And that's where all of these neat little yellow tabs are for each one of those concepts. However, it just seems a little weird under a data analysis chapter, the entire chapter is about data science. Whatever, we can get into semantics all we want. But he talks about decision trees, um, which I have used. Um, he talks about the mighty random forest, and I'm pretty sure my friend Dave Langer gets uh, some sort of commission every time someone refers to it as that but I can't say random forest without the word mighty in front of it anymore because of Dave. Talks about Ken's nearest, <laughs> damn it. 
Jokes about K nearest neighbors. What's up, Kenji? I am, uh, I'm, you've branded that thing so well that now I'm fundamentally incapable of saying K nearest neighbors, not Ken's nearest neighbors. Love Kenji and his podcast. Um, it goes from there into Naive Bays, which is a name that makes me chuckle every time. Uh, logistic regression. You can see I, I drew some little pictures. I'm kind of going away from my marker board here. So decision trees, random trees in the mighty random forest. K nearest neighbors with their little clusters here. These are all clustering algorithms. Naive Bayes, I didn't have room for a picture for Naive Bayes. But logistic regression, you can see my cutesy little uh, sigmoid function there. And then it gets into, so there's the classification algorithms. He gets into clustering. So K means and hierarchical clustering. And I was very concerned that I wouldn't be able to pronounce hierarchical on the first take. Good deal. All right. Um, so this chapter, now you know what? We're going to go into the next chapter. I'll, I'll, I'll sum it up afterwards. So feeling a bit Arabic today, okay? We're not going we're not going left to right like English. We're going right to left. Again, I didn't plan this well, so we're going six to seven. Just deal with it. All right. Chapter seven, data analysis number two. Still weird, but we're pushing forward. Um, this is where he gets into like the real AI stuff. So uh, chapter seven starts talking about reinforcement learning. Uh, under that, you've got your upper confidence bound. Did my best to picture that. And then Thompson sampling, you can see my little distributions right here and their, their means. Um, and then deep learning, I did my best. You might not be able to see it, but that's a little neuron right there. You know, something neuron. Okay. So um, this is where it gets into kind of uber nerdery, but the strength of this section, first of all, these two chapters are the strength of the book. They comprise about 100 pages. The book itself is less than 300, unless you count the index, which I don't. Um, but this is the bulk of the book. Um, so it's a third of the book fully, and it is, it's what's going to stick with you. Because I was familiar with using a couple of these concepts I was familiar with the names of most of them, um, but I now feel like I really have a pretty good grasp, at least of the theory. You're not going to get into the practice of them. Obviously, it's a fairly small book, and these are fairly complex theories. Okay, so that is part two. Part three is how can I present it, and I'll, I'll show you it kind of gets off the rails of that as well. Chapter eight, data visualization. Chapter nine, data presentation not the same thing, although they do overlap slightly. And then chapter 10, your career in data science. Again, weird, doesn't really seem to fit. Um, what I will point out is that each one of these chapters is excellent as a standalone. Um, but you know, getting into the, the pros and cons, let's go cons first because there are definitely more pros than there are cons. The cons are, first of all, just kind of backing up, you know, least offensive to most offensive, the title, Confident Data Skills. If you pick up a book called Confident Data Skills, you're thinking that at the end of reading said book, you're gonna have some more skills. Like, when I think skills, I think something concrete. Like, I'm gonna be able to sit down and do a linear regression. That's not this. There's no homework in here. There's no real granular math or, or any assignments for you to do. There's no coding assignments. Um, yeah, so confident data skills really does not seem to address the actual subject of this book, which is kind of a wave top discussion of a, a data analytics process and, and data science concepts. Um, I kind of get the feeling like the publisher told Carol, hey, this title will sell really well. And Carol was just like, yeah, whatever, let's roll with it. Um, but who knows, maybe if Carol ever sees this, Carol, tell us why this title. I'm honestly curious. Um, second minor gripe, the book is short. Um, it's 300 pages. I don't remember what it costs. I'm sure it was, I mean, worth every penny because it's a great book and I've definitely spent more for terrible books. This one's great. Um, but it's 300 pages and it goes quick. Uh, it's, it just doesn't take long. The, the pages, it's kind of thick stock. The, the text is fairly large. Um, and there's a ton of charts and graphs, so that kind of cuts down your reading time. Um, I, I kind of wish there was more to it uh, when I was done with it. Minor gripe, everything that's in here is high quality. So the real gripes, the book is disjointed. Uh, there's not a great flow to it, and kind of case in point, okay, section one, good, good to go. Uh, section two, when and where can I get data? Does anything in 
classification and clustering and reinforcement learning and stuff like that address when and where to get data. Um, so that's weird. ID the question in data prep, you're getting into some data analysis steps. There's plenty of different data analysis processes, but most of them are like five, six steps, right? Any, any kind of problem solving process is probably gonna run you more than two steps. It goes four, five, and then, hey, let's do a decision tree. So kind of a weird and, and jarring thing. Again, both of these chapters are wonderful and very necessary, but as a data analyst myself, who has dreams of being a data scientist, I can say fairly confidently that most data problems don't go from data prep to classification or clustering algorithms. Um, most data problems, I think, are, are solved with some lesser form, an analytic process, uh, some sort of comparison. You may go straight from data prep to a, a lower level analytics, maybe a linear regression. Linear regression is nowhere in here, okay? And then, like I said, the chapter titles, data analysis, all of this is data science. Now we can get into semantics all we want, but it's just kind of weird as analysis number one. It's, it's a strange title and it's a strange flow from here to here. And then when you get down here, you get to visualization presentation, which is kind of a continuation of your process, but then your career in data science, um, which brings me to my final minor objection to this book. And I feel like it tried to be all things to all people. Um, it didn't, didn't kind of give the time to focus on one thing and or just make the book bigger if you're gonna contain all of that content. I definitely could have used more of what Kirill had to say on every one of these subjects. Um, and so, yeah, kind of hope he writes another book. So, the prose. The writing is fantastic. Kirill is a brilliant man and it kind of shows on every page. It's, um, it, the individual sections flow very well. It's, uh, it's just well thought out within it. It keeps you turning pages. I didn't feel like 75 hard, you gotta re read 10 pages a day. I never felt like just reading the 10 pages and then kind of chucking it in a corner and coming back tomorrow. I always wanted to read more. Um, I definitely could have ripped through this in one day if I still had whole days to spend, I don't. Um, so anyway, Bottom line, I think that this book is very good. Um, it's enjoyable. It's a page turner if you're anything like me. And let's be honest, if you're watching a 20 minute book review about a data science book, you are like me. Either that or you're my mother. What's up, mom? Um, and the middle section is just, it really shines. And he makes all of these concepts, these heavy, heavy data science concepts, interesting and, and engaging. And I feel like just about anybody with reasonable math skills, would comprehend everything he talks about in that section. And, and again, really enjoyed all of the concrete examples. It really makes it very tangible, makes it, you, you can kind of reach out and, and touch what's in this book and say, okay, I understand how this is used. So, ton of strengths, couple of minor gripes, take it for what it's worth, okay? Highly recommend it, definitely worth the price. What's up next? I have Ace, the data science interview, uh, my friend Nick Singh was kind enough to send me a copy of this. Much appreciated. I have already started it. Um, Nick Singh and Kevin Huo, I should address both authors. Um, so I've already started this, finished Confident Data Skills a couple of days ago. Um, really enjoying, I should hold it, cover up. Really enjoying the, the tone and the writing style of it. It honestly feels like you're sitting around with Nick and Kevin having a beer and they're giving you mentorship on how to navigate your career. Um, it's very conversational, very, it just feels like kind of how they talk. Um, and, and it's super cool. I've heard Nick on a ton of different podcasts and, and video channels, you know, talking mostly about this book, but just about his career. He's a fascinating dude. Um, and, and what I've heard about Kevin, he, he is also. So, so far, I recommend it. Um, I am not going to be doing all of the homework assignments in this book because some of them uh, I'm not capable of doing yet. There's a lot of heavy duty coding uh, questions in here, but really looking forward to, to see what this is all about. So we're reaching 20 minutes. I really appreciate the tens of you that are gonna watch this. If you have made it this far, if you enjoy this content, or if you hate this content, please let me know. Um, I'm looking to do more video content. I'm looking to do more things to reinforce 
my own learning and engage with my audience. So do me a favor, smash that like button or the unlike button if you feel that way and let me know why. And subscribe to my channel. I will see you later with more.